All right, this is uh, a presentation setting the table by myself, Marcus Water. Uh, the first story I want to talk about is Nobody Dies in the Spring by uh, Philip Appleman. Philip Appleman is a uh, famous American poet and writer. And Nobody Dies in the Spring, he, does a, he uses a setting, he describes a setting as good and bad. And I chose this photo by Kenneth Wisley from Flickr because the interior, the green parts of New York City here, would represent the good in this picture, and then the bad in this picture would be the outskirts, you know, the infrastructure, the buildings of New York City. But more specifically, in the actual piece of Nobody Dies in the Spring, there's certain quotes like, hot leg men are racing their push carts down Riverside Drive with, with uh, holding, they're holding hands with strangers while they're singing the suite. That shows the good side of New York City through, uh, you know, actions of people and what goes on in New York City. But there's also the bad, the dirty side of New York City uh, that Appleman writes a lot about. Specifically, he writes, neighborhood narcs and markers go whistling in the streets. That clearly shows the bad. So he does a little compare and contrast throughout the entire piece to show the good and bad in New York City and combine it into one nice little setting for, for ourselves. Now, the next uh, piece I want to talk about is Nude Interrogation by Yusuf Kumanyaka. Kumanyaka is a uh, American Pulitzer Prize winning uh, poet and he's also a professor. Um, I chose this image to describe the uh, story because of a certain quote that, or a certain line that Kumanyaka writes in the uh, piece which is when she flicks off the black light snowy hills rush up to the windows. I use this image for that for, because it shows you know the snow rushing up to the windows and you kind of get that vibe of the setting that it's in a bedroom and something is going down. Um, now, more specifically, um, the piece is influenced by thoughts and actions. Um, for example, the first one where it talks about you know the two rock star posters, you kind of get that vibe from Angelica that the setting is you know where she's at in the, uh, is it's kind of you know rocky. The person that she's with, she's in a bedroom of some other dude, and you kind of get that vibe that he's kind of, you know, hardcore and a rock guy. But with the uh, next quote, some people may not know what the word sandalwood, sandalwood means, including myself, I don't know what that word means. But due to words that follow it, you kind of get that vibe of what that word actually means due to other words behind it. And it kind of shows the intimate vibe of the room as well. That, you know, they're all, you know, Angelica is get, undressing herself it is definitely more of an intimate vibe as well. Now, the next story I want to talk about is The Werewolf by Angela Carter. Uh, Angela Carter is an English short story writer and poet. Uh, one thing I think that she doesn't do a great job of introducing the setting is the very first line of the story, she writes, it is a northern country, they have cold weather, they have cold hearts. It, the bad thing about that is that you can't, she kind of directly uh, mentions the setting where she says it's a northern country, it's a cold place. I don't think you really need that in the first line as later on in the story you kind of get that vibe that yes it's a cold place, you know, it's winter time, it's definitely a northern country where you get that from other context, from the context of the story, you don't really need it from the start. However, the last part of the line where she says they have cold hearts, I do believe this is good for character development because it shows later on there was a huge scuffle between one of the characters and a wolf and it shows how the character isn't afraid to back down, you know, they have cold hearts, they are not afraid to, you know, go up against the wolf and she actually cut off the wolf's arm that shows that, you know, not a, a person with a cold heart definitely could have the capability of doing that and will definitely be a, a person that could step up to a wolf. Now I want to give you this uh, a very important quote from Jane Friedman, who, uh, she's an editor of the Hot Sheet and a very famous uh, blogger. She talks about the interaction of setting and with characters. Now, if you don't have characters interact with the setting, one, it doesn't show character development, and two, you don't really, the, as an audience, you don't really get a vibe of what the setting actually is. So, when characters uh, interact with setting, it shows the, it shows how they can respond within their setting, it shows what they're useful with, what they're not useful with, and it, you know, it creates a nice image for the reader to show, oh yeah, this is where, where they're at, this is what they're doing. It creates a nice you know, visual, visualization for the audience. 
Now, going back to uh, stories, the last story I want to talk about is The School by Donald Barsalme, who is an uh, American short story writer. Uh, I use this uh, photo to think of, you know, I, when you think of school, especially, uh, you know, kindergarten, kindergarten to preschoolers, you typically, th typically think of a safer place. Maybe not so much now, as you know, you, you get all the bad of school, but t you typically think of a good place, but in, within the story, you don't really get that sense as, you know, a lot of things die in the school, whether it be, you know, plants, animals that they get uh, from, you know, donations, or, you know, even a person dies in this uh, school. Especially this one quote I want to read off, which is, as soon as I saw the puppy, I, puppy, I thought, oh Christ, I bet it will live for two weeks, and then that's what it did. So with that, that clearly shows that, you know, it's definitely not a safe place to be for any life form, whether that be humans or, you know, animals or even plants for that matter. It's definitely not a safe environment here at this school that Donald Barthelme writes about. Now, now I want to leave you with this quote from Janet Burway, who is, you know, the author of the book that we're, we're reading for this class. And she's also an American author and a 1990s 1970, sorry, nominee of the Pulitzer Prize, and she talks about how setting is, you know, the fuel, the gasoline for, uh, of the story. Without setting, you don't really have a story. Setting is probably one of the most important elements within any, you know, story you need it. It's what gets it going. It's a start. Um, yeah, thank